The Christmas countdown is on as we're officially two weeks or 14 days away from Christmas Day itself. And in this video, we'll be walking you through your white Christmas chances and the upcoming weather leading up to Christmas Day. In today's question, how much snow do you want for Christmas this year? Comment the, your answer down below on the comment section down below the video. I will be going through those later on today. Looking at the seasonal snowfall accumulation, since September 30th of 2023, we've seen a lot of snowfall across the Rockies and the Pacific Northwest. We did see some heavier snows falling across North Dakota, Northern Minnesota, and especially here into interior New England as well as we went through so far this year and looking at the current snow depth so far right now we do have some heavier snows continuing to remain on the ground across the rockies the pacific northwest and those higher elevations a little bit of snow up there as well lingering across north dakota northern minnesota and up toward the up of Michigan and then eventually again we do have that snow adding up across portions of interior New England as we speak here this morning with a storm system that is moving out. Looking currently at our El Nino conditions, we have our sea surface temperature anomaly map up right now. And when you look for El Nino, you want to look for warmer blobs of water anomalies here. And you can see that's across portions of the central equatorial Pacific. We see those orange and red blobs. That does indicate a moderate to strong El Nino that does remain intact across the region. And that dates all the way back to our late summer and early fall months. And right now we are officially in a strong El Nino at a plus 1.5 as we go forward. Typically what we see for El Nino conditions across the United States and North America for the matter, we have a less active polar jet stream further up to the north with warmer temperatures across portions of the Aleutian Islands into Alaska, southern portions of Canada, and the northern tier of the United States. That also leads to drier weather. As you can imagine, warmer weather correlates to high pressure a lot of the time. And then with low pressure underneath that, with that subtropical jet across the southern tier of the United States, we have cooler weather as we have more cloud cover, more chances for precipitation, and overall wetter weather underneath that here as we go with an El Nino pattern. Let's look at our current weather conditions here early this morning. We have that strong low pressure system moving across portions of the Northeast and New England and eventually up into Eastern Canada. You can clearly see the cold frontal boundary is off the coast here. So that is some great news. That is a cold front that unfortunately did bring some very strong storms across the mid South and a lot of tornadoes over the past couple of days. You can see the deformation snow band on the backside, continuing to see some heavy snow snow up there into upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and northern Maine. That will be adding up to a couple more inches as we go through the day. The middle of the country, very dry, and that's the high pressure system. Lots of sunshine out there as you go off to work or school today. And then across the Pacific Northwest, we have a little system moving in with some higher elevation snows up there for those ski resorts across the Pacific Northwest. Looking at our temperatures this morning, it's feeling like November, December out there, especially north across the upper Midwest, waking up to temperatures into the upper teens and low 20s. Further to the south, it's pretty chilly as well, into the 30s, 40s out there, down into Texas, uh, the lower Mississippi Valley, and into the southeastern United States as of this morning. Let's look at the synoptic pattern of our weather as we move forward through the week. Today, we have a couple of low pressure systems moving through with troughs. You have a trough over here into the New England region, bringing some back end snowfall across portions of interior New England. That storm system will be moving out into the Western Atlantic Basin later today. We have another trough moving in across Manitoba into Western Ontario as well. But note the ridge starting to build across British Columbia, Alberta, and just generally Western Canada here, that will start to sink over the top 
of this air mass as we go into portions of Wednesday. You see a little bit of a cutoff low pressure system down here into the Four Corners region, and then you see a strong ridge or high pressure system. Again, we correlate this with El Nino with warmer temperatures over the top, and that's what we see as we go into Wednesday, and then that crashes over the top even more and spreads out as we go into Friday later on this week. That means that underneath that ridge and that high pressure system, we have a lot of dry weather. So that will typically lead to above normal temperatures with our temperature anomalies this week from Monday, December 11th through Friday, December 15th. Underneath that, we have that cutoff low that's going to be moving across the southern Four Corners region through Arizona, New Mexico, and eventually down here toward the Rio Grande Valley into Texas. And that means we're going to have near normal to slightly below normal temperatures expected through much of this week as we go across the southern tier of the United States. Looking at those temperatures today, we have widespread 40s, 50s, and 60s out there across the middle of the country. The cold air will be bottled up well to the north into Canada today. Midweek, we still see much of the same. The cold air will remain across Ontario, Quebec, Canada, and really eastern Canada there. Of course, with the snowpack across New England there, we could be seeing temperatures held down into the 20s and 30s just due to the fact that the snowpack is on the ground there. Outside of that, though, warm temperatures for midweek on Wednesday, and then we warm up very nicely as we go into mid to December on Friday, December 15th, 50 degree line could go all the way up into the Midwest. We're up to 53 there in Des Moines, nearing 50 there in Chicago at 45 and same thing over there in Detroit at 46 on Friday. And notice that snowpack will begin to melt across New England as well with temperatures into the upper 30s and low 40s on Friday. Looking at the jet stream this week, and just to break this down very nicely for you, you can notice the polar jet stream is further to the north. It's moving up over top of that ridge of high pressure we were talking about that it will be building in for the week. You have that subtropical jet bringing in all that Pacific moisture across portions of the Rio Grande Valley, Mexico, and down near the Gulf Coast this week. And you can see that here. You got the polar jet to the north, and then you have that subtropical jet further to the south. And what this is means is we have split flow in the jet stream and normally with split flow we don't typically see very strong and powerful storm systems across the mainland U.S. or even southern Canada so that means a lot of quieter weather but every once in a while we could have one of these what we call cutoff low pressure systems moving across the Four Corners region down into portions of Texas and the Rio Grande Valley and that will bring some above normal precipitation this week across those areas especially there into eastern New Mexico, much of west Texas, and then getting down into south central Texas, and then that will turn into more of a rain system for Florida, and then up the east coast through the week. So looking at this midweek system here, you can see this is the 500 millibar vorticity signature. This does show a lot of the energy and spin in the atmosphere. The brighter the color, the, the more spin we have in the, the environment. And we have that low pressure system down near the Phoenix region by Wednesday. By Friday, this starts to move in toward the Abilene region in Lubbock, Texas, as we go into later on this week. So that means that cutoff low pressure system will be slow moving in about three day period. It's going to take its time from the Phoenix region to get to Lubbock, Texas in about two or three day period this week. So it's cut off from the main, the main jet stream in our environment. And you can see later this week, it's going to have a lot of moisture to work with. A lot of moisture in the Gulf of Mexico. That will be lifting northward across Texas and western Oklahoma. So it's going to be pulling in some of those higher precipitable water values up to around an inch, inch and a half, two inches per hour there. With those rainfall rates that you could see especially across the Rio Grande Valley and south central Texas mid to late week. So let's walk you through the precipitation this week. So today, very dry across the country. We're seeing that strong Stronger storm system moving east across the western Atlantic Basin and eastern Canada. And we're left with high pressure, lots of sunshine here on the backside. A little bit of higher elevation snows, though, across the Pacific Northwest as 
we did mention earlier on in the video. But by midweek, there's that cutoff low pressure system. We have the rainfall and then turning to snow on the backside as we have some of that moisture moving up into Colorado, northeastern New Mexico, and the colder air there will support more of a snow or a rain snow mix on Wednesday. That will continue into Thursday, even Friday time frame. We're going to continue to see this meander across Texas Hill Country here in the Rio Grande Valley. So these rainfall and snowfall amounts will be adding up in pretty significantly as we go through later on this week. Let's look at those here. Here's our rainfall accumulation through the week. This takes us through Friday, December 15th through mid-month here. A lot of heavier rain for portions there of eastern New Mexico, the panhandle of Oklahoma, Texas, and all the way down through west central, and then eventually south central Texas toward the Rio Grande Valley. And look at some of these totals here. The Amarillo area could be picking up near an inch and a half to two inches of rain. Lubbock down to Midland, Texas, around two inches of rain. The Abilene region around two inches. And then as you get down further south toward the San Antonio, the Brownsville, the Corpus Christi region, we could be picking up two to three inches of rain as we go through the week here and yeah did I mention there's going to be some cold air to work with here and these models may be overdoing the snowfall amounts I know it's still early season snows so these models can continue to struggle a little bit with some of these amounts so don't take them verbatim but just the placement of some of the heavier snows on here suggests that at least northeastern New Mexico, the northern panhandle of Texas up into the panhandle of Oklahoma, Colorado, and to southwestern Kansas could be seeing a few inches of snow as noted by the European model. And generally the GFS, the American model, does agree that mostly northeastern New Mexico will see the snow, but even portions there of Colorado, southwestern Kansas, the Oklahoma and Texas panhandle could be seeing the snowfall even on the GFS model as well. Then as we go into the following week, Monday, December 18th through Christmas Eve on Sunday, December 24th there, yeah, we're seeing a lot of above normal temperatures all month long and that continues really into the last week of the month here. And looking at that, the start of the period on Monday, December 18th, much like we've been been seeing here, 30s to the north, and we're going to see 40s, 50s, and 60s further to the south. We're up to 72 potentially on Monday the 18th of December in the Phoenix region. And then as we go into Christmas Eve time frame, look at the big slug of warm air that will be pushing up into portions of the Central Plains, the Midwest, the Great Lakes, into the Ohio Valley. We're pushing 50 again in Chicago, Milwaukee. We're pushing the mid-40s there into Des Moines and even 50 there in Indianapolis, close to 60, 55 degrees there into St. Louis on Christmas Eve. That just gives you an idea that this could be a pretty warm Christmas headed our way as we go further into the next several days. And looking at these temperature anomalies for Christmas Eve, yeah, we're 10, 20, even closing in on 30 degrees above normal for that time of year once we get to Christmas Eve, especially centered up there into the northern high plains and the upper Midwest. And even look at Ontario, folks. We're up to around almost 40 degrees above normal in Ontario, potentially, for Christmas Eve, just some crazy stuff. And looking at that period here, you notice you have that polar jet stream with the warmer air across the northern U.S., with that typical El Nino pattern. And then you have that subtropical jet underneath. And you can see that very clearly here where you have that subtropical jet bringing in some of that Pacific moisture. And then that less than active polar jet to the north with that split flow as we go from that December 18th through the 24th time frame. And just to confirm that with you, the Climate Prediction Center does agree that we, with that polar jet, there's not going to be a lot of moisture, but a lot of dry air across portions of the northern United States into the Great Lakes region and the eastern two-thirds of the country and then with that El Nino pattern kicking in with the subtropical jet during the 18th through the 24th time frame leading up to Christmas that's where we have the above normal precipitation whether it's rain or it's snow depending on if you're in for example the Sierras out in California maybe some snow into parts of the Four Corners region or the Pacific Northwest. And then we have some more rains across portions of Southern Kansas, Oklahoma, and into Texas during that period. And that could linger over into South Central Florida with some above normal precipitation during that time frame as well. 
So here are your white Christmas prospects here. Here's the potential snow depth in inches for Christmas Day as you're waking up for gift giving or just having fun with friends and family and having a good time on Christmas Day. Here's the snowpack potential, folks. If you live across the Rockies, especially in those higher elevations, you're likely going to have a white Christmas. That is almost a given at this point. The Sierras over there into California and some of those mountains up there into Washington State and Oregon, that's pretty much a given. If you live across the upper Midwest or the Midwest in general, it's going to be a struggle to see snowfall for Christmas Day with those warmer temperatures and that below normal precipitation. That is not a good signal for a white Christmas. Same thing across the Deep South in the southeast just too warm for a white christmas this year unfortunately so if you like the warmer weather on christmas you'll be getting it across the south central and southeastern u.s and then across the mid-atlantic there's some chance we could have some snow on the ground especially along the appalachians and then up into interior new england here where we recently did just put down a heavy snowpack that we continue to see some snow flying around this morning that could stick around for a little while as well as we get toward that Christmas day time frame leading to a white Christmas for you folks up there and otherwise in southern Canada you're going to have to be in British Columbia and then over here into eastern Canada especially Quebec to see some very heavy snowpack on the ground other than that just not seeing a lot of a white Christmas so about 80% of the country as we go to Christmas day will actually see more of a green Christmas with a lot of grass out there and probably not much snow this coming year. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed today's weather content. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. It really means so much to me. Be sure to press the subscribe button down below, especially if you like these detailed weather breakdowns across North America. I will continue to do these for you folks to keep you prepared for this upcoming winter season and beyond. Also, be sure to press the like button down below. It's the thumbs up button. Share this video with friends, family, and on social media, and I hope everybody has a great rest of their Monday out there.